everyone. Today we're going to talk about differential reinforcement. You've probably heard of differential reinforcement before. We're going to talk about the different schedules and the main differences. First, let's talk about DRA, differential reinforcement of alternative behaviors. This is relatively common in applied behavior analysis where we are reinforcing a response class of behaviors. So several behaviors that are alternative to the problem behavior will receive reinforcement. One example could be if a child regularly elopes or runs away from the classroom, we would reinforce a lot of walking behavior or staying with the class or staying in line. Any of these behaviors that are in place of elopement that are on task and appropriate will get reinforcement. It's not necessarily one specific behavior, but it's a group of behaviors that are alternative to the problem behavior. Next, there are two subtypes of differential reinforcement of alternative behaviors, DRO and DRI. DRO is differential reinforcement of other behaviors. Although this sounds similar to DRA, there are more specific elements related to the schedule that are important to know. Differential reinforcement of other behaviors really is reinforcing all other behaviors besides that target behavior. Often it's for severe behaviors and we always incorporate an interval schedule with DRO. Interval schedules are required. How do we come up with this interval schedule? We use IRT, inter-response time. Now with DRO, again, it's for severe behavior, so any other behavior can happen except for that problem behavior. Let's use head hitting. So let's say that we have Sal and he hits his head about every five minutes. So we've collected the data and we say, okay, he hits his head about every five minutes. Now, since that behavior is very severe and it happens a lot, we want to implement a DRO schedule. So we will pick his most preferred reinforcer. Let's say that it's iPad, Thomas the Train videos. So let's say that every five minutes, if he doesn't hit his head, he will get a Thomas the Train clip for let's say 30 seconds. Now he can do other behaviors. He can throw a chair, hit, whatever else it might be. He'll still get his Thomas the Train video if he doesn't hit his head. So this behavior is so severe that we're gonna match the most preferred item with the absence of the head hitting. Now there might be other interventions in place for the elopement or the throwing the chair or the hitting others. There could be other other factors or other reinforcement schedules in place for the absence of those, but the DRO schedule is focusing on this one severe behavior. DRI is differential reinforcement of incompatible behaviors. This schedule is specific for problem behaviors and you want to identify one behavior that you can't do at the same time. It's incompatible. It's impossible for a child to pick their nose and put hands in pockets at the same time. So we would want to reinforce hands in pockets if picking nose is a problem behavior. Also, if we have, let's say that we have hitting others. Well, we might want to encourage, along with a variety of other strategies, but just for DRI, we might want to encourage hands folded in lap when they have an urge to hit others. Now, like I said, these, these differential reinforcement schedules are never the only thing that's going on, but it's important that we can identify that piece of the puzzle so that we can complete the full intervention treatment package. Okay, so we may wanna teach coping skills, et cetera. It's kind of another video and other things to help regulate emotions, all of that stuff, but just the DRI component. Other examples, sitting in chair instead of running around the class, things like that. Two other schedules of reinforcement are DRD and DRL, differential reinforcement of diminishing rates of behavior and differential reinforcement of low rates of behavior. Now, both of these schedules want to decrease some element of the behavior, but not eliminate it completely. DRL, differential reinforcement of low rates of behavior, that's going to be for a behavior that happens too fast. So let's say eating too quickly. Well, we don't want to eliminate eating completely, but we might want to decrease the rate. So we might implement a schedule that 
helps teach a child to have a better eating pace, so will reinforce after waiting 10 seconds between each bite. On the other hand, DRD, diminishing rates, this is for somebody who might eat too much in one setting. So we may reinforce the number of bites to be a lower diminishing rate, like 20 bites per meal instead of over 100. Or, or we might identify a specific quantity of food that they can um, get reinforcement for. DRH is differential reinforcement of high rates. So this is for behaviors that you want to increase. So maybe there is a child who greets peers only once per day and we really want to encourage them to have more greetings. This, we may want to establish a new level that, that they will get reinforcement for. So DRH, let's say if they talk to different peers more than three times, they'll get reinforcement. Now that example isn't one I've actually used, but that's just an example to share. It's not a very common schedule. DRA, DRO, and DRI are the most common schedules that I use. There's also DRC, which is differential reinforcement of communication or communicative behaviors. And this is going to be a basic functional communication training replacement. But really you'll find that functional communication training can be a replacement behavior for a lot of different types of schedules. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.